Hello, good morning. Dear Margaret, I would like to start by thanking you for inviting me to address to you today. I'm very glad to have this opportunity to share with you what I think are two important challenges facing competition policy today. The first concerns the absence of a permanent stabilization instrument, which creates a dangerous temptation to grow for, for flexibility in state aid rules in situations of crisis. The second is about how this policy area can contribute to Europe's competitiveness. Starting with the first challenge, we need a permanent macroeconomic stabilization instrument for crisis situations. This is the only way to ensure a level playing field and to prevent asymmetric fiscal capacities from deepening the divergence among member states. We have seen how such an instrument was missing during the financial crisis and how essential it was in the response to COVID pandemic. In 2020, Shua supported 31.5 million people and 2.5 million firms and further 9 million people and 800,000 firms in 2021. At the same time, member states that used Shua saved at an estimated 8.5 billion euro in interest payments, which they could use to invest. In other words, state aid rules should not be burdened with a task that they cannot perform alone or even in the leading capacity. This was true regarding the pandemics, and it's also true now when it comes to saving Europe's economies from the consequences of the energy crisis. Too much flexibility for too long in the area of state aid rules can cause lasting damage to the single market. That is why, in the absence of a permanent stabilization instrument, I have put forward a pragmatic solution to Europeanize this ongoing effort to protect European companies from the impact of increasing energy prices. We should use the existing leeway within next generation EU, namely through Repower, to support our companies. We can do this, enlarging eligibilities without new instruments, without new debt, on the basis of unusual loans of which there are more than 200 billion euros. The most effective, the most transparent, and the least discretionary way to protect our companies and households would be to channel funds into the gas and electricity markets through regulatory measures to ensure lower energy prices for all. A good example is what has happened in Portugal. Obviously, you using temporary state aid rules, and we helped around 300 gas intensive companies. But by injecting 3 billion euros into gas and electricity markets through the regulatory system, we are going to ensure lower energy prices for all, for all companies and for all households. At current prices, these temporary interventions represents a 78% reduction in the cost of gas and 60% reduction in electricity costs faced by companies. Moving now on the second challenge, how can competition policy reinforce the competitiveness and resilience of our economy? In other words, how can we strengthen cooperation within the European economy and increase its competitiveness as a major global player. In our view, the most successful approach is one that reinforces the links between CMEs, large companies, and the research and innovation system. This is the most effective way to build today the industries of the future. 
with resilient value chains, high quality and future proof jobs and more European added value. This is the model we have applied in Portugal in the context of our recovery and re resilience plan with a disruptive program called mobilizing agendas. In the end sense, the agendas are large, innovative and collaborative investment projects to be implemented by private sector consortia, involving necessarily companies and the innovation system, and co-financed by funds from the RRP. The overall goal is twofold. First, to create or strengthen new industrial clusters in areas such green hydrogen, batteries, semiconductors, or artificial in the intelligence. And second, to modernize our traditional sectors, such the car industry, textile, and footwear, agri-food, tourism, and retail, among others. The mobilization of the stakeholders in Portugal was outstanding, even above best expectations. An international jury have selected 51 consortia for a total investment of 7.6 billion euros. The public support will amount to an expected 3 billion, 2 billion width of which to fund innovation and the technological development. The projects involve more than 1,200 entities, of which almost half are SMEs and span or entire territory. This has proved to be a very successful model. And we can now go beyond the national scale and promote cross-fertilization across companies and the innovation systems of the different European Union countries as well. In this manner, public funds channeled by the to the private sector work at the catalyzed both for increased competitiveness at the global scale, at the same time for further European economic integration. By doing this, we boost the social and economic resilience of the European Union, building a fairer and safer future for all. I believe this model could be a benchmark for the use of public, namely European funds, in support of economic competitiveness while complying with stated rules. To conclude, I would like to, to again thank again the European Commission for the opportunity to address you today. Portugal will continue to support the Commission's efforts to enforce European competition rules in the way that works for people, for companies and for all.